uh, and I think that uh, children these days are extremely fragile because perhaps a certain amount of pressure is not put. The lady just now just spoke about the fact that children, you know, they are treated as adults when they are still children. I completely agree with that, that because parents are busy, and I'm not trying to say that it's parents' responsibility and not school. I think we need to work together. I definitely feel that. But I think that parents are too busy and so they uh, uh, allow them to take responsibilities which they are not ready to take. No, I and so then they hmm. take decisions of this kind uh, towards violence which is actually not a fully thought out decision. Yeah. It is an, no, I you know, totally on the spur of the moment decision. I don't think the children themselves want to be violent and all. They are sorry for it yeah, after but they do I, it. I, but I, they take right. this very mm. quick step. Uh, yes, uh, Sonia. I think that just because they are children who are violent, we cannot entirely absolve them of their violent behavior either. While I agree with you, and I think we're all in agreement, that there have to be stakeholders, the parent, the family, as well as the school. And I also think there's a third part of this, and that is the societal norm. When what is being crammed That's down true. the children's throats every day is success, is success. at all costs, at all costs, measurable success. Who talks at about all simple costs. living and high thinking today? Who values it? Nobody. Who, who talks? Nobody. How, Nobody. How, Nobody. No, but you see, I, here's, a here's a question. You see, the entire post reforms generation. I want to ask this to our teachers in Delhi. The entire post reforms, immediate post reforms generation that came out of college 20 years back, when they were in school. Their parents would still tell, talk about simple living and high thinking being the foundation of success. Do how many parents talk about that today? How many? This is something that has no, to be. No, may I say something about. here? Yes, yes, please, Miss Wattel. May I say something here? Yes, Miss Wattel. You know, I think there's been a systemic there's been a systemic breakdown of the way we're looking at learning, except for literacy and numeracy. Yeah. That is what learning has descended into and skill-based education, this obsession with skill-based education that has come in and literacy and numeracy because of things like this, there is no scope for reflection, there is no scope for thought, there is no scope for any kind of processes that are, that are uh, required in order to bring uh, in and integrate value systems I, I understand, schooling. but let me... And so I think it's imperative that we have to look at that. Well, let, me, let me put a dilemma as, that as I a, As I a have. generation, as a group. I, have a, I, have, I want to present one case is a case study as a dilemma. I saw this story in Mumbai. Uh, there is about a month back in Mumbai, a class nine student during an algebra exam uh, is is uh, is told by his school principal, not a teacher, don't disturb the rest of the class. Uh, the the child goes up and slaps the teacher and abuses the teacher. This happened in Mumbai. In that case, my question is. Do you discipline that child Absolutely. or do you counsel that child? I think you do both. Can I don't do think that one exists without the other. There's no point punishing the child if the child does not understand why his action now, now, is fundamentally Now, if the wrong. teacher says the child is under the influence of alcohol and drugs, I don't know if in this case, but there have been cases before where it turns out the child is under the influence of alcohol and drugs. But Who do you blame for that? The parents? Yes, to a large extent. And you tell the parents, counsel your child or discipline your child? You compel, I think, parents to come in and take responsibility for their child's behavior. And when you don't intervene, then what happens? Then you're calling for trouble. Absolutely. I think you have to intervene. Would but Arnav, let's remember that we're talking about students slapping a principal. You think our politicians are not doing that? And that splashed on the front page. They're getting away with it. They're blackening some principal's face. They're beating up somebody else. They get away with it. They're treated that, that, as heroes. That, that's true. Uh, what would you do in that case? Discipline a child or counsel a child? I think it has to be a combination of both. And one of the thing, questions that I keep asking myself when I look at, at, at the larger system, right? the larger number of our children yeah. today are in government schools. Yeah. And in government schools, let alone counseling or counselors, you don't even have teachers who are going to be there for the children. So how, when, when we have children of a particular, and in this case it is a particular age group, how do you create a support system around them, which is a combination. True, but and I agree, uh, when I'm saying counselling, I don't mean that the child is blameless yeah. and that there will be no discipline. That's boundary yeah, keeping. You see, when a child becomes physically able, uh, we, we take the case, one, one case, in, in fact, 
Miss Koshi. But uh, you need boundary keepers. Or you would find it interesting and worrying. In the last two months, so many cases have come up. In Chennai, you have a case where a student of class 12 stabs a 28-year-old woman who's alone in her house because he wants a gold chain. Right? In, in, our, in, our, in our society today, Miss Koshi, tell me, do we ever tell a child that money is not the most important thing in life? We, we, we are almost embarrassed in post-reforms India to not to talk about the importance of money. Success is important, but success is no, seen no, to be the... Money is a, extremely a, a, important. <laughs> yes. Let me tell you that money is extremely important to everybody. Parents do not tell children how much they are earning and what is being spent. So children have no idea of the kind of money that is being spent and they are not aware of the kind of stresses that parents are going through. But I do want to say that unless you know the nation as a whole is aware of its responsibilities towards for instance we're talking about RTE and you know we just celebrated an anniversary yes. but we've got children into school the numbers are more but what do we do with them and does society have a responsibility the lady just spoke about politicians slapping and you know like we have the politicians with all kinds of cases against them we have n number of people who've gone to jail and come out after corruption. Yeah. So there is nothing in society that shows that if you misbehave or you run over somebody, that you will not be out very soon That's because true. of various reasons. So a child has no reason to fear any of the things that should be feared. And counseling involves discipline, Arna. We're not will you discipline or counsel? Yeah. I mean, it's a com it's a combo, isn't it? It doesn't come, you know. Yeah. without one or the other. Yep. Parents are not open to disciplining. Well, parents I, I, are not I, open to advice. I, I think that parents they need counselling even... They you know, born to yeah. parents. Parents need counselling even more than the kids. But, uh, but uh, what we've seen about this teenage rage over the last few and months... And I'd also like to say, Arnav, yes, that you know, parents no. today, single families, earlier there used to be an adult, an elder in the house to advise the parent how to look after the child or how to monitor the child. Now with the single family uh, scenario, there. there is no elder. So it's a very selfish no, also, you know, a unit that is the family today. Okay, quick, quick, for quick, up, quick couple of last goal. comments. Also, I think that, I'd like to say Ms. something, Water. Arnav. I yes. think uh, ch children, uh, you know, at times I've met parents who, are, who, who, say to me, who tell me that their, uh, that their uh, children are living in their homes like guests. Because parents themselves are rather afraid of their own children. Now, why has so much of lack of communication taken place where the parents and children have become strangers to each other? There's a complete breakdown of communication, of dialoguing. Yep. The moment there's no dialoguing, there's no understanding of what's happening in the child's mind. You know, and that's the same thing that happens in overcrowded well, classrooms. I think, I think in, I because think if one a classroom is, is not so overcrowded, Ms. Koshi makes that valid point. I think a lot of things have changed in India for the better in the last 20 years. But I think that a lot of things have also gone wrong in the last 20 years. And what we used to talk about, you know, the Indian upbringing of participating in a child's development, giving a child a certain direction, I think that's somewhere, you know, we need to bring that back because something's going wrong in our society. If we don't see this, Ms. Marwa, it's going to get worse. These were supposed to be American problems. You know, pull a gun out attack your teacher, stab somebody, slap a teacher. You know, th these extreme situations we always thought were things that happened in American high schools and American campuses. You know, there's, there's one point I think we, we were looking at this violent and we are making, you know, we are, we, we, some way I'm getting uncomfortable that this is all about children becoming violent. And uh, we need to look at this problem in its entirety. We need to look at the fact that there is a lot of violence on children as well in our system. And this violence is in that they are not seen as individuals. They are only seen as performers. A little, uh, I, call, I call them performing monkeys. Yeah. You know, in and out of school, both by parents and by schools. Yeah. They, the, uh, a lot of, they are shamed on a routine basis for low marks, for what they may not have done, what they may have done. And when you're overall looking at how we treat children, I think we need to, as a society, understand this yeah. is our future. Yeah. How, what we, we surround yeah. them with and yeah. what values we give we them do. and help them I, to I complete, inculcate I complete, will be Unfortunately, key. I'm out of time, to, but I would only like to say this, Adi, I'm thankful for this conversation today. 
and I hope that those who can make a difference introduce those changes in our syllabus so we bring some values back. We keep fighting about which politician, which political figure, whether Marx should be in or somebody should be out of our syllabus. If we only bring values yes. back into our syllabus, values, not just religion, but values back into our syllabus, maybe that will be one change. To my participants tonight, thank you for joining me on the News Hour tonight. Well, that's something that we are going to follow up with. We have many stories coming up. Remember, Times Now is exposing part by part also the Tatra files, the inside story of what's been happening in that defense team. More coming up tomorrow on that. Till then, good night and goodbye.